If you have crazy, crazy stuff going on in your mind about fishing and projects, just go, just go for it. Go out and do it. All it, all it takes is, is time. I mean, uh, doesn't need to be very, very tricky. Or I mean, just, just go with the flow. You, you might find some crazy new method or technique. I mean, that's, that's fishing for me. Is finding new ways of catching the fish. Today we are doing something very, very special. Something I've been wanting to do for many years. We are going to go out on the Baltic Sea and try to catch a Baltic salmon with uh, float and uh, herring as a bait. Also we're going to do some, uh, some spinning at the same time and uh, maybe also some vertical fishing. Uh, but first we need to find some herring and that's what I'm doing right now. So uh, stay, stay focused. We'll see if we can catch the amount of bait fish we need and then we head out to the big seas. The typical, <laughs> typical herring gear. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm using a Roots G2 Pike Finesse, seven and a half, seven and a half foot, 60 gram spinning rod with a 4,000 reel, um, 20, 0, 20 millimeter braided line, and a Silhekla, a Sabiki, Sabiki rig, oops, and a 40 gram sinker. That's it. The important thing with herring fishing is to always stay focused because. They are, the bites, they are super, super sensitive. So really tricky fish. And it's also very important with the moon face because they won't always bite. <laughs> now we're ready with the herring. Now we have the bait fish. Now we're rolling out to try to find a salmon. Just a quick view of the gear that I'm using. I'm using trolling rods with a trolling reel, a line counter. Uh, you could use any type of, of reel and rod, spinning or, or trolling. I like the line counters because you can always keep a track of, of where the, the float is. Braided line, this is a strike wire, uh, 036 millimeter. I normally use this, this is the, the big catch, the BFT big catch uh, heavy trolling rod, predator trolling. It's an eight and a half footer, and it's uh, mostly I use it for side planers and dipsy divers. So this is the dipsy diver setup that I've used when I'm trolling for salmon. This is the, the float stop. This is a stop knot, and this determines how, how deep the rig will fish. So I can adjust this. Then I have a float. This is a big float, it's a 60 gram. I think it's a pike float, or they're even called mackerel float sometimes. So I'm using a uh, 60 gram on this one, and I'm ha I'm, I have a 80 gram uh, float on the other rod. Sliding like that, stainless steel crane swivel, size four, I think. And then I have the leader material going on uh, down here. But before I tie this one on, I slide the sinker on, and this is a carp sinker that is 60 grams so you can use any type of slide sinker but uh, the 60 gram uh, or it should it should match the the uh, float so this is a 60 gram float I'm using a 60 gram weight uh, swivel 0 50 millimeter fluorocarbon I'm using the strike wire uh, fluorocarbon leader and finally I'm using a single hook treble hook setup this is a owner SSW 
I don't really know what size this one is. We're gonna have to check that out later. <laughs> or put that in the comments or the, the description or something. And also a, an Owner ST36 Stinger treble size 2. And this one is snelled or, or uh, uh, tied on with a knotless knot. And this one is tied on with a grinner. So this is the, the dead uh, herring. Good size fish, like, mm, I don't know, 18, 19, 20 centimeter fish. Like that. And then I am putting the treble through the back and out again. Like that. Really simple. And I don't think you need to have the hooks really, really far in the back of the bait fish. Because I think these salmon will, will uh, hit the lure quite, quite hard. And uh, yeah, I think this is the way to go. You could even just go with a single hook. But as this is the first time we're trying it, I want to be safe, so I'm using a treble as well. We've spread out the, the rods here. I'm using two float rods, like this one. One goes 100 feet behind the boat, and it is set on 3 to 4 meters. This one goes 50 feet behind the boat, and it's set a little bit deeper, like 4 or 5 meters. And then I have Exactly the same setup, but instead of a float, I'm using side planers because we're drifting quite fast so I can get the rods out. So we're using four trolling setups, two with floats and two with side planers, but the side planers will act like floats as well. So when the fish strikes, I think they will disappear. And also I have a fifth rod and that's a, that's a carp or a dead bait uh, pike setup with a big, big bait runner, uh, 12 foot rod. And we're using a balloon as a float. And we're fishing that one like 100 meters off and uh, quite close to the surface with a small sinker and a bait. So uh, sort of a sailfish or marlin tactic, really cool. So hopefully we'll <laughs> get a strike on that rod as well. So five rods, drifting with the wind, really simple. I mean, you don't even need to use side planers. Uh, you just, it's, it's simple. The only thing you need to be prepared of is, is bad weather because we're on the Baltic Sea, so it's kind of can be kind of rough. <laughs> I can't believe it's a dorsh on my roots fault. Fish on, first fish, looks to be an about 8-10 kilo fish. Oh. Whoa, oh, oh, did he miss that? Fish just uh, unhooked himself in the net, but it's finally, finally, finally in the net. Well, um, this fish has no fat fin, which means that it's uh, it's not a wild fish, so we can keep it, and and that's a good luck because you see it's kind of badly cut with the hooks underneath. Uh, but we're gonna keep this fish for food and 
God damn, this is the first salmon I've caught using using herring, using dead baits. On a float, drifting with the boat. I've been wanting to do this for three years. <laughs> this is somewhat of a crazy project that I'm doing right now. But uh, I'm, on, I'm on vacation for a week and uh, vacation is the time to do, to experiment and do new things, to do some crazy stuff in fishing. So every year I have something new going on to try. And this fishing is, is mostly why I want to do this. And with uh, using, using dead baits and floats is because I used to do a lot of specimen angling, carp and pike and, and sander. And, Float fishing for tench, uh, slow trolling for pike and, and sander. So this is sort of back to basic for me and I, I really enjoy it. And being out here completely flat soon, middle of the ocean, it's super beautiful. If you have crazy, crazy stuff going on in your mind about fishing and projects, just go, just go for it. Go out and do it. All it, all it takes is, is time. I mean, uh, it doesn't need to be very, very tricky or, I mean, just, just go with the flow. You, you might find some crazy new method or technique. I mean, that's, that's fishing for me, is finding new ways of catching the fish. Oh, and by the way, you're kind of used to me wearing my BFT cap. Uh, I had one on the way out, but uh, I lost it. It blew off. So now I'm on the Vance cap as a reserve. So maybe I'll give Vance a call, see if they can give me some sponsor money for, for this clip. <laughs> 